Okay, today we are reviewing for a communications test. And you might be thinking, well, we've done a lot of graphing lately, uh, so how is this a, you know, tied to that? Well, the graphing test actually is coming a couple days after the communications test, but the communications test is things about the graphs, like for instance, if I gave you this equation, y equals negative 4 sine of 2x minus pi over 2 plus 3, you should be able to answer tons of things about this. It's a sine graph, so hopefully you know it's generally a wave, okay? And a lot of things have been changed, though. You should be able to tell me the amplitude. You should be able to tell me the period. And be careful, it's changed. Remember also that to get the phase shift, you better not just grab this negative pi over 2. That is not the phase shift here. You're going to have to do some factoring first to find your phase shift. Uh, you also should be able to tell me the, uh, the transformations in order. I'm going to ask you to start on inside just so that we don't have 8 million possible combinations. If you start on the inside, please, then we'll know. And if I were you, I'd factor this before you do anything else. Get this part factored, and then you should be able to answer all these questions about amplitude and period and phase shift. Oh, two more that I should add in. Domain and range. Very easy if you know what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to pause for a second while you try to answer those questions. Here we go. All right, some thoughts on this one. Uh, I know you may not be done, but I want to kind of keep this moving, so I'm going to start answering it. And if you're not done yet, you should just finish answering it and then go back and look up and check. All right, first thing you should have done is factored this. This 2 comes out, and what's left in here is the x. And then what should I put here? Well, it has to be a minus. That only makes sense because 2 times x will make 2x. And this will have to be negative something. And it obviously has to have a pi in it. And you just check it and see if that would work. You know, 2 times the x, 2x. 2 times the negative pi makes negative 2 pi. Oh, wait a minute, that's way too big. So I have to use something smaller there. Specifically, I think it comes down to that. Doesn't it? Okay, and how do I know? Because if I go 2 times the x, I get my 2x back. And 2 times pi over 4 would make 2 pi over 4. Isn't that the same? Or negative 2 pi over 4. Isn't that the same as that? Yes, it is. Okay. So now, why did I do that? Because that tells me the phase shift. The phase shift here is pi over 4. Have we ever done... Is a pi over 4 a common angle? What is it, anyway? How many degrees? Pi over 4 is... What? Not 90. 45. Pi over 4 is 45. All right. All right, so... Uh, now let's get back to the amplitude, domain, range, all that kind of stuff. Okay, domain, always, all reals. Okay, it goes forever in both directions. The sine wave just keeps going. Okay, and how about the range of it? Well, it doesn't go forever up and forever down. It maxes out. It normally maxes at 1 and negative 1, but in this case, because of that, what's the highest it'll ever go? 4. And the lowest? Negative 4. So you should have said negative 4 to 4. Okay, the amplitude is always found right here. But if you said negative 4, shame on you, it's 4. You can't use the negative in the amplitude. What would, it, what would that mean anyway? I mean, if it's going 4, you know, the wave goes like this. And from the middle line of the wave, the amplitude is how high it goes and how low it goes from there. So the total swing, I call it, is 8. But the amplitude is only 4. It's up. And it wouldn't be negative, but that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, so period. Well, it's normally 2 pi, isn't it? But the formula for period is 2 pi over b. And if you just replace that with a b, and we'll be good. What is the b in this case? 2. It's this number right there. 2 pi over 2. Should you reduce that? Absolutely. What's the answer? Just pi. Period is pi. The phase shift, now that we've factored it, the phase shift is right there. And you'd say right or left. You don't say negative. In this case, it's right pi over 4. 
Again, you wouldn't ever say like left negative whatever or right negative whatever. You just say pi over 4 and then say if, no matter whether it's positive or negative, uh, you would say a word that goes with that. So if it's negative, you'll say right, and if it's positive, you'll say left. Sir? Uh, nope. You did it in the wrong order. Do you get that there's a right order that you have to do math in? And if we start on the inside, and I'm going to get to that order in just a second. That's what's coming up here. Okay. But if you start on the inside, like I asked you to here, then my choice is either this is first or that's first. I'll give you a hint. That's in parentheses. That normally forces it to be first. But since we're on the inside of a function, everything's opposite in there, opposite of what your normal order is. So we're on the inside. We don't do this first. We do that first. Normally, you would do parentheses first. OK, so that 2 has to go first, which is the thing that would renumber your function. You know what I mean? Your graph, if we were graphing it, you'd do the renumbering of everything. All right. So. What's first? That too. What is it? Is it a vertical or horizontal thing? Well, my little thing I've been using is horizontal on the inside, high, and vertical on the outside, vo. High and vo. So that's a horizontal because it's on the inside. So horizontal with a two factor seems like it should be twice as wide horizontally, but you're on the inside. So it's the opposite of that. It's half as wide, so that is a horizontal shrink with a factor don't say two because that would make it grow factor one half we have had the same kind of question on tests like this is like a fourth test these are just getting more complicated but it's the order is really important parentheses are not first inside parentheses normally first but they're not first on the inside Okay, number two. Now that I've done the two, now I can do the thing in the parentheses, which is write pi over four. Notice that's the phase shift. Okay, number three. I go to the outside. And then I got three things left. The negative, the four, and the three. And these you do in the normal order. Multiply is normally first, so I do those. And it can be either the negative or the 4, either one. Okay, so I'm going to choose to go with the negative first. No, wait, I like to stretch before you flip. It works in gymnastics, and it also works in math. Okay, so stretching first, so that's going to be a vertical stretch factor 4. And then the flip, vertical reflect. Notice by doing that, I cleverly don't have to decide if it's over the x or the y axis. If I say vertical, you know when it's vertical on the outside? All right. And then last is the 3, and that's a plus 3, and let's keep it simple. It's up 3. Again, these two can be reversed legally, math-wise. But these two could not. You had to notice that the parentheses were in there. And this thing was in parentheses, so that couldn't be first, because you were starting on the inside. All right. Now that is tough enough that I'm guessing not many people got the order right. Who had the order exactly right? It's half of you. All right. That's not too bad. That's better than I thought. Okay. Do you, if you got the order wrong, do you know what you did wrong? All right. That's the main thing. Okay. So that is a tough question. It has so many little pieces, and this factoring thing has to be done before you answer it. All of them. All right, that's a, that's a really tough one. You know that that's not a you know super simple one. All right, let's go back to some ones that are relatively easier. Uh, let's go with cosine of uh, negative two pi over three. What? If I had just said cosine of two pi over three, I hope you'd be able to find that really quickly. But this isn't that much harder. You just have to go the opposite way. Find your negative 2 pi or 3 by going around that way. You find 2 thirds of a pi. Hopefully you know where pi is. In case you forgot, pi is over there. So if I'm going to go 2 thirds of the way to pi, 
I gotta go around here. This would be all the way to pi. Don't want to go that far. Want to go two thirds of the way. About two thirds of the way is about like there. There's my line. You guys finish it and tell me what cosine at that spot is. Remember, there's negatives involved, and this is the most common mistake on this test. A lot of points will be lost for kids that aren't careful with their negatives. I'm going to pause for a second while you give that one a shot. All right, for your next problem, I'm just going to just prompt you with this. A-S-T-C. Remember that? So between, in this little zone where we are, would you are, agree we are between pi and 3 pi over 2? That's where this other spot is. We're in that little zone. In that little zone between pi and 3 pi over 2, the only is one function that comes out positive, and what is it? Tangent. Did I ask you to do tangent? No, what did I ask you to do? Cosine. So does your answer have to be negative? Yes. Because tangent's the only one that will come out positive. A-S-T-C. Tangent is the only one that's positive here. If your answer didn't come out negative, you did something wrong. That's another way you can kind of check yourself. How many of you got an answer that was negative? Okay, good. So here's how it should have gone. If this is my triangle and this is my reference angle right there, i got to figure out how big it is. Well, if this was two-thirds of the way to the pi, this is one-third of a pi left. I happen to have that one memorized, and you should too. One-third of a pi is 60 degrees, right? So if that's a 60, that makes this a 60, and this is a 90, and this is a 30, and I have that one memorized. One, two, square root of three, but because we're in this quadrant, it's negative one and negative square root of three, and that's probably why some of you didn't get a negative answer. Watch out for your negatives. Okay, now i got to take of this angle, i got to use cosine. I can't actually do this angle. That's why I made this triangle. I do this angle, and that works. Cosine of that angle, cosine of the 60, is ka adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative 1. The hypotenuse is 2. The answer is negative 1 half. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. Okay. So now, let's do another one that's a little simpler. Uh, sine of... 7 pi over 6. First thing I'd be thinking of is, okay, where's 6 pi over 6? Because it must be really close to that. 6 pi over 6. Oh, that's pi. So it's, a little, it's close to pi, but it's a little further than that. Alright, 7 pi over 6 is down there. Pretty close to the last one, but it's not the same. If this was 6 pi over 6 to here, then how much past it did we go? We went past there. We went past 6 pi over 6. How much more? 1 pi over 6. So this is pi over 6 right there. That's also known as 30 degrees. <coughs> so I know we're in the 30, 60, 90. Across from the 30 is a 1, and then this is 2, and this is square root of 3. And now I have to make my sides negative, negative there, and a negative there. And the sine of this, sine is opposite of hypotenuse. From this angle's perspective right here, the opposite is negative 1. The hypotenuse is 2, and it's negative 1 half. Holy cow. I got that answer again. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. Okay. Now let's do a little bit more with, let's say, I'm not going to say I'm in the S quadrant, you know, A-S-T-C, or I'm in the T quadrant. I'm not even going to say I'm in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2 or quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. I'm going to say I'm between 3 pi over 2 and pi. Actually, you should do it in order from small to the big, sorry. I'm from 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 to pi, no, 2 pi. I'm in that interval. Do you know where I am? And if you do, tell me, what are sine, cosine, and tangent? 
if I'm where I said I am, sine, cosine, and tangent, and all I need to know is one of them's positive, one of them's negative, the other one's negative. You know what I mean? Okay, so for some of you that are lost, here's 3 pi over 2, and here's 2 pi. So obviously I'm in there. I'm in here somewhere. And I better probably label it A, S, T, C, and so now I know that sine is what? Negative or positive? Negative. Cosine is what? Positive. And tangent is what? Negative. So if I, I basically said it in a complicated way. I'm in here. And I'd ask you what the other one, what all the functions are. Sine is neg. Everything's negative except cosine. Cosine is pos. And the other one must be negative. Tangent is neg. All right. There's questions where you have to give uh, all the answers that work. Do you remember these? The directions would say that we're between zero uh, is less than or equal to our angle, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. Actually, it doesn't look like that. It looks like that. Do you notice that you, what answer would be kind of common and yet you could not use it? The answers are angles, right? What's a common angle on the circle that we talk about a fair amount, but you could not use? Yeah, 360 or otherwise known as, what's it is in radian? 2 pi. Why can't you use 2 pi? Because it says less than. It can't be 2 pi. Now, what is something that is in the same exact spot as 2 pi that you could say? Zero. Okay, so be careful with these directions. I'm not saying it's on this test, but at some point you're going to be needing that because obviously those, the directions are there for a reason. Otherwise they just say give all the answers and then, you know, actually there's infinite answers. We have to limit it. Because remember how sine goes to forever? So if sine goes forever, then if I want to know when is sine equal to like root 3 over 2 or something, it's going to be that a million times, a zillion times, an in unlimited number of times. So we have to limit it between here and here and then if we say or equal to, do you get that 0 and 2 pi are the same thing? So you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to have a choice. Which one should I do, 0 or 2 pi? This is telling you which one to do. Okay. So now, let's do a problem that uses those directions. Let's say I needed to know when is, when is this going to work when sine is negative sine of some angle is going to come out to negative square root of 3 over 2. If you're stuck right now, you should be thinking, all right, where the heck is a sign that's negative? There's only a couple places where sign is negative. If I do the ASTC thing, I can see that sign is positive here and here. So that's not going to work then because I want sign to be negative. So I have to be in these two spots. Here's one of my triangles. And here's my other triangle. And now I just have to put my sides on my triangle and figure out, am I on a 30-60-90 or am I on a 45-45-90? And figure out what the angles are. And notice, the angles are not things like 30 degrees. They're big angles. The blue one is from here all the way around to there. That's a big angle. The red one is from here all the way around to there. That's a big angle. So you better not give answers like pi over 6. That's a small angle that's in the first quadrant. These answers are both big. Okay, I'll pause for a second.
and let you try it further. All right, so here's how you do this one. First of all, you had to notice that sine was negative, and that meant there were two places we could be. That means there's two answers, one for this quadrant and one for this quadrant. Okay, so I'm going to do the blue triangle first here. Uh, if this is the important angle, I know that the opposite over the hypotenuse, I like to put in those little helper monkeys sometimes, the opposite is negative root 3. That's the opposite from this side, negative root 3. And the hypotenuse is 2. And then I know, oh, the other one must be a 1. I know which triangle I'm in. I'm in the 1, 2, square root of 3 triangle. That one means, which angle is this? It's not across from the 1, so it's not the 30. You get that? This is across from the negative root 3 side. That's the 60. Now, if this is a 60, I translate that back in my head to, okay, pi over 3. And if that's pi over 3 right there, the common answer that's wrong is to say pi over 3. No, that would be over here. That's where pi over 3 is. Okay, so actually it's more like this, but anyway, that's where pi over 3 is. This is all the way around here. So it's, uh, in counting in pi over 3s, it'd be 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. How many of you had 4 pi over 3 as one of your answers? Awesome. Okay, then the other one, i got to keep going. And yes, this is going to be the same one. Do I have to redraw it and everything? Nope. I can say, okay, well, logically, if this was a pi over 3 thing, now i got to figure out how to go all the way around to almost 2 pi. All the way around. I'm going to do the red one this time. From here, this would be 3 pi over 3 to here. This was 4 pi over 3. This must be 5 pi over 3, and if I had finished, it would have been 6 pi over 3, but that's too far, right? So 5 pi over 3 stopped right there, so 5 pi over 3. That's the other one. So, who got that one too? Nice. All right, now I did help you a little bit on the setup on that one. What if the directions for the same exact problem had not been this, that would have been a hint. We probably only want one answer. And instead, what if they had said and tangent is greater than zero? Do you get now which of my two answers must be right? If tangent's greater than zero, the only place where that is is in the T, A, S, T, E, C, right? Tangent is greater than zero. That must be saying this one, which means that one's right and this one's not right. I changed the question here. I'm just saying, if the directions had been to not tell all the angles, but instead tell where is this also true, it, there would have been two answers until you factor in tangent has to be bigger than zero, and then it can't be here. All right. Now let's uh, do a completely different kind. Um, on the back side of yesterday's worksheet, do you remember there were problems on there where they said, okay, the minimum is this and the maximum is that? I'm going to start you with some simple ones. Okay, I want you to draw me a sine wave. Just everybody draw a sine wave. Just a normal one. Let's say that the lowest it ever is is negative 5, and the highest it ever is is 1. Its minimum is negative 5, and its maximum is 1. There's a sine wave. It's actually helpful to not even have an axis in there at all. And just say, what's the lowest it ever got? That's like here. And that's negative 5. And the highest it ever was? That's like this. What's the highest it ever was? 1. So, what question could you answer about this sine wave? Amplitude. The amplitude. And the amplitude common mistake answer is, well, the difference between negative 5 and 1 uh, is they are 6 apart from each other. So the amplitude is 6. Wrong. Is half of that. You get that? The distance between these two is 6, but the amplitude is only this part of it the, that goes to the center line of your thing. So if the difference between them is 6, the amplitude must be 3. Okay, now that's the easy kind. Harder kind is if I tell you how far apart this and this are, do you get I'm telling you 
what the period is by saying how far apart those are? All right. You get that this is a complete cycle from here to here. That's like cosine. It's one complete cycle. Okay. Would it also be a complete cycle to go from here to here? Do you get that? It's a full cycle. It goes from uh, negative 5 all the way back and up down to negative 5 again. That's one complete cycle. Where's another complete cycle? Going from here to here would be one complete cycle. Do you get that? So if I tell you where those two spots are, whether it's these two blue dots or whether it's these two you know, red uh, slashes, if I tell you where those are, you can tell me how far apart they are and therefore what the period is. All right? So I'm going to make a new picture because mine's getting messy, and you should too. Now let's say this lowest spot right here is at pi over 2. Stay with me. Draw that. If the minimum's at pi over 2, and the next minimum that you come to is at 5 pi over 2, then tell me, how far apart are they, and therefore, what is the period? Well, if this had been a number line, and this had been a, uh, a 12, and this had been a 7, how far apart are they? They'd be 5. How are you getting that? You're subtracting them. That's how you get them. You take this, and you subtract this. you got to think of this as a 1 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2 take away 1 pi over 2 makes what? Come on, what's 5 pi over 2 minus 1 pi over 2? 4 pi over 2. Now, can I simplify that a little bit? It's 2 pi. Now, couldn't you just said, well, I know it was going to be 2 pi because it's sine. No, not every sine wave has a period of 2 pi. What if it had been stretched or something? So I'm going to give you another one where it doesn't come out to 2 pi. All right, so here's another one. And let's say this is at, I'll make it the peaks this time. This is at 5 pi. And this is at 1 pi. So, say it if you know it. 4 pi. What is that? 4 pi is the what? Period. All right. Okay, now I'm going to change it just a little bit. What if I only tell you halfway? And I say, well, from here to here, it's from 1 pi to 4 pi. Now if I subtract them and get 3 pi, I have not found the period. I found half of the period. So you have to double it up, right? So what is it? 6 pi in this case. Okay, so now what if I give you both pieces of information? What if I said this highest spot right here is at 10, and the lowest spot right here is at 4, and it's also... 1 pi and 4 pi. Do you get that the ones I just circled, those are the x's? So I could actually write this as an x comma y. That point right there is pi comma 10. That point right there is 4 pi comma 4. Do you get that I just told you enough that you could get the amplitude? And you could get the period? Okay, figure out the period and the amplitude for this. That's this kind of height, right? I'll figure out what's the difference between them. Between 10 and 4 is the difference of 6. The amplitude is 6, right? 
No, the amplitude's three. And again, common mistake, Bill. If I'm figuring out the period, kids have at least some have figured out that, okay, well, the period is the difference between this and this. Kind of. The difference between that and that is 3 pi. And so let's say the period is 3 pi. What is it really? 6 pi, because why? Because it hasn't completed a full cycle from there to there. It's only done half of it. So it's 3 pi to get from there to there. Total of 6 pi to get from there to there. 6 pi. All right. Next topic. Um, actually, I think we've covered, uh, I feel comfortable that you were uh, well practiced, but I, we should still do a bunch of practice problems off of the packet. So I'm going to hand the packet out. I'm going to pause for a second while I do that, and then we'll do some of the packet together. Okay, so I got the packet now, and uh, the first few are uh, really, really easy, just drawing a reference triangle. Uh, I don't think we should even practice that because it's too easy. Let's move on to number seven. Here's a point. They are giving you a point. Where would root three comma one be? Think about it. Where would root three comma one be? Aren't they both positive numbers? And therefore, doesn't it have to be somewhere in here? Do you get what I'm saying? Since they're both positive numbers, root three comma one has to be somewhere in there. So there's my dot. I can put it anywhere I want to. And I put call it root 3 comma 1. Now, do you remember how that actually gave me two sides of a triangle? So let's make the triangle. And root 3, root 3 is the x of it. That's root 3. And the y of it is the 1, and that makes this 1. And then that means, oh, yeah, this is the 1, 2, root 3 deal. There we go. And I know which triangle I'm in. 30, 60, 90, right? And what's one's across from the 1? The 30. I know my triangle's drawn kind of funny because it looks more like a 60, but that doesn't matter. I'm not going to make you redraw it. Good enough. I've got it labeled. And whenever you're, tr you're doing something like this, go with whatever it's labeled with instead of what the picture looks like. So that's 30. This must be 60 then. And this must be 90. There we go. And did I draw the reference triangle? Yep. Did I label the reference angles in degrees and radians? Ah, so I better go back and label it with radians. This is the reference angle, so 30 degrees is also pi over 6. Always go back and read the directions, especially on the test. You can have done it like a simple one like this, and just not notice that it said and radians, and all of a sudden it's going to be wrong. Okay, so please double check your directions. All right, let's move on. Let's look at, like... We haven't done anything with a quadrantal. Let's do 21. Problem 21. A quadrantal is one of those kind where you can't draw a triangle for it. Sine of 2 pi. Okay, where's 2 pi? 2 pi is all the way around to there, and so basically it's the same thing as 0. It's right there. Can't draw a triangle for that one. Do you remember what to do? Sine is what? Sine's y. Cosine is what? X. And tangent is what? Y over X. Good. So this is a spot. This point right there would be what, comma, what? Right, and then it doesn't go up. And so, come on, what did it, what come out? 1, comma, 0. Good. So if that point is 1, comma, 0, then... What is, I could find sine, cosine, or tangent of it. That'd be pretty easy. But what did I say? Sine. So sine of it is the y. The y of it is 0. And therefore, it's 0. Notice, I drew a picture. I could have done this in my head and then had a 50-50 chance to be wrong. Draw a picture. You'll really increase your, your accuracy. Much less likely to make dumb mistakes. Okay? All right. Uh, so well, let's go back to 19 and do secant of 180. We haven't done any of those like, sister functions for a while. Secant of 180. Pictures are worth a thousand words. I'd go to 180. 180's over here. And since I can't draw a triangle, I'd make the point. That point right there, negative 1 comma 0. Okay, now secant. What the heck? What if I don't want to do secant? What if I want to do 
Sine, cosine, or tangent. What would be smart? The sister of it. What's the sister of secant? Cosine. In case you forgot them, it goes like this. Sine, C, S, C. Uh, cosine and secant and tangent and cotangent. So secant is across from cosine. So I'd do cosine of it and then what? Inverse it. They're the flippin' sisters, remember? So I'm going to do instead of secant of 180, I'm going to figure out the cosine of 180 and then I'm going to flip it. 1 over the cosine of 180. 1 over means flip it. Okay? So what's the cosine there? The well, cosine is the x. The x of it is negative 1. Okay? So my answer is negative 1. But i got to flip it. 1 over negative 1, which is the same exact thing, actually. Negative 1. In this case, flipping it didn't do anything to it. If you flip a 1 over, it's still a 1. Anything else you flip over is different. Although 0. If you had zero and you tried to flip it, you would still have zero. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's look at number 23. It says the point, three, negative 3, comma 6. I know where that is. Negative 3, comma 6. Boom. Draw an accurate picture. Is on the terminal side of angle theta. Okay, so basically it's saying that this is theta. Theta is always there. Okay. Now it wants to know the sine, cosine, tangent, all of them. How am I supposed to know that? Because you know how long the sides are. If you know this point right here is at negative 3, 6, you know the x is negative 3 and the y is 6. And this other side you can figure out. We gave you a shortcuts for that. Square root of, you know what I mean? The square root of uh, 6 squared is 36, 3 squared is 9, 36 is 9 makes 45. Should you simplify that? Yes, but I don't want to do that right now because it's going to take too much time. So, final answer, sine, cosine, tangent of the angles, and then they're flipping sisters. What is the sine of that angle? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite 6, hypotenuse is root 45. 6 over, let's just do one quick. What's the root 45? Is root 9 and root 5. That's going to be 3 root 5. 3 root 5. There we go, 6 over 3 root 5. And the flipping sister of that, of course, would be cosecant. And cosecant, when you just flip it over, you'd say 3 root 5 over 6. Cosine of this angle, cosine of this angle is, uh, that's going to use that negative number, that's good, because cosine over here is supposed to be negative. Ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 3 over 3 root 5. There we go. And the tangent is the y over the x. Oh, no, in this case, sorry. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 6. Adjacent is negative 3. So 6 over negative 3. And that's going to reduce to negative 2. Okay. So that's... I give you a bunch of that one. Probably give you too much help on that one, but I didn't want you to be stumped on it. Uh, let's look at number uh, 24. All it asks is, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? If you know where 173 is, you could pretty quickly tell, oh, if I'm over there and I'm talking about cosine, A-S-T-C, cosine over here is going to be negative, so it's negative. Okay. Obviously, did all the help I could for you, and that's all I have for you for today.